as you guys are approaching Ghostdale, the gate is completely destroyed. The walls are wood. They're still standing, but uh, you can see that no no buildings surpass like the walls. And there used to be a huge fort here, but from over the wall, you can't see anything. Okay, so this one and two with you, by the way. Um, one is going to be Hayden's brother, and two is going to be uh, Harvey. Uh, it is still dark. As of now, I would say you guys haven't lit any lights or anything like that. But you guys are right outside the gate. Uh, what do you guys want to do? So we should sneak up and look inside for sure. Yeah, I'm a snipey boy, so I'm going to stay back. <laughs> yeah. None of us are frontline fighters. I have a plus five to stealth. Does anybody have anything better than that? Oh, I have a plus tender. seven to it? stealth. Yeah, I can sneak up. Are you sneaking through the darkness then? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. Hey, um, you make your way to the front gate. Oh, no, Ian. It's supposed to be plus seven, so it's 11. As you go to sneak up, it is dark, and you have a hard time seeing even where you're going. As you go through the darkness, you make quite a bit of noise. You stumble through leaves. Uh, you snap lots of branches. You at one point kick on a stump, making a very loud sound, causing the tree to shake. You were pretty loud in your attempt to sneak over there. You did the best you could, but it was too dark. Um, you don't know if they've seen you or not yet, but you were at the gate. The gate is completely destroyed. There is no door. You look in, and in the fort, you can th- you can see four fires lit. Um, around the four fires... Um, you see that each fire is surrounded by knolls. Um, the first fire you see has three knolls who, they have nothing, just them and the fire, but they are looking over at these other three knolls who you can see are eating a whole deer together, these three. Savages. Um, on to the third fire, you see that there are three knolls, but they're looking away from the fire into the darkness at something, and you can't really tell what they're doing. And in the distance... You can, can't can really see the very last fire. You can see the fire, but you can't make out what's going on at that one. You're too far away. Uh, I let them know that there's some sketchy business afoot, but the gates look pretty uh, safe to walk through. There's just a couple campfires on the other side. Martin asks, how many of them did you see? <laughs> I saw probably about 11 or 12. Um, Harvey, Harvey kind of stands up, like speaks up and says, that means there's double the amount of them as there are us. There's no way we would survive a fight like that. If we were all like you, Harvey, there would be no chance. We'd already be dead. I'm kind of inclined He's... to agree, though. Like, we can try and hold them at the the doorway to, like, the gate, but... Rizzi knew all things are possible. Uh, I agree. I guess I can, I can probably shoot. We could probably shoot them and coax them into us, coming up to us, and then just jump them at the gate. Otherwise, um, I don't know, can not can we wait for them to go to sleep and uh, try and make a sneak attack? I think we definitely should wait till daytime. And then do that same plan just at the daytime. Same plan. Just muff them up while they sleep. Also, if I remember the map correctly, I think this wall just goes to the water. And I'm pretty sure we could just yeah. swim, like, swim around it if we didn't want to go through the gate. But I kind of want to go through the gate, but I'll tell you what. I would propose that we wait for them, some of them to go to bed, and then we can um, light their their tents with the sacred flame of the heavens. You're sick. I'm listening to Gene. <laughs> that dude knows what he's doing. Look at that hammer. Is this whole That's area flanked by the woods? So the forest goes all the way down to the water, and the wall goes all the way down to the water. You could slip around the wall, but you'd have to get like into the water. Um, but other than that, the whole fort is completely surrounded by forest. But the other side, um, the other side also has a gate. And as you guys were approaching the wall, the sun was still up. It only just barely went down. It's up to you guys how you want to camp, who is staying awake, and who is uh, going to keep watch. I'll watch, and Cliff said he'd watch. Zenu. And Callum are both going to stay up to keep watch. Yep. Uh, will both of you make a perception check with disadvantage? An eight. I got 21. Did you roll twice? Oh, twice? My bad. I got 31. <laughs> <laughs> I got 10. <laughs> As you guys are standing watch, um, Mando, Eldrin, and Garen, uh, you all, all three of you wake up to a sudden... Wake up. Incredibly sharp pain. 
there are three giant wasps nesting in a tree above you. Uh, <laughs> you guys disturb them through the night, and they decide to fl- fly down and sting the closest thing they could find, which just happened to be the three Assholes. who are sleeping. The people sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice job, Zenu. I pull out my rapier, and I make an attack against the dude next to me. You hit it. It's crunchy outer shell just completely breaks as you hit it. Therapist. You did not manage to kill it or knock it down. You just managed to make it angrier. It begins to release a very high-pitched buzzing noise that it's not loud, but you can feel it through your bones as it moves throughout the forest. Okay, well, I'm going to hit the one closest to Tanner um, with my little scythe boy, my chain sickle. And then I'm just going to try and, like, swing it down and just see if I can, like, chop it in half. It's vibrating, releasing this loud so- noise, but right as it begins its vibrations, you successfully come down. Uh, the outer shell's already pretty much smashed, but you're able to come down and completely, it's flat. It is dead. I'm going to use my reaction to use a blood curse, fallen puppet. A monster that hits zero hit within 30 feet of me have one last bit of aggression and attack. Okay, uh, the one giant wasp flies over and stings into the other wasp, stabbing the other wasp pretty good, but then after that he dies. Yeah? Yeah. So who am I attacking? I don't know. That's Wait, not really my decision. So is, yeah. is, is three <laughs> dead? Who's three? Three's dead. Three is dead now. Okay, so I'm attacking one. You shoot a bolt straight through that wasp, but the wasp does not go down. He's barely flying, but he is still up. Harvey it was still kind of sleeping, but as he kind of like rolls awake a little bit and sees these giant insects flying above everybody, he is having a very hard time containing his fear, and uh, he lets out a little bit of a shriek. Um, and he immediately begins backing up deeper into the woods. Somebody please kill Harvey. I say it may be wise for us to move towards the water's edge, and then I uh, cast Sacred Flame onto the wasp that is nearing Eldrin. Okay, he takes two damage. Um, I'm going to attack the one that is almost dead. Oh, you're swinging at that one? Yeah. And you missed your attack. And now it is the wasp's turn. So that wasp is going to attempt to sting at... Mando. Um, then he goes to sting you and barely misses you. Nice. Very close. And Even in the uh, darkness, okay, you can sense it. This one is going for Eldrin. Sense it. And he, will uh, try. he swung. He he swung so erratically at the wasp that the wasp didn't know what to do and completely missed him in return. Through the quiet of the woods, you can hear a slight rustling over the wall. Nothing crazy, but you can hear movement. I'm gonna move up by Eldrin and attack that wasp. In the confusion of their back and forth, you step in and you're able to swing and do a direct hit onto the wasp. You hit the wasp dead on. It is gushing out. A lot of his exoskeleton is gone. His little legs are Absolutely falling off. Absolutely gushing. But it is still alive, and it, it it's still pretty dang angry, and Ooh, it begins to vibrate as well. I'm going to well, use my me. chain whip uh, and just try and cut this one in half. You go ahead and make your chain whip attack. You come very close to hitting man. Well, I am going to run up and try and punch him this time. Uh, I'm going to like okay. jump and like drop my elbow on it and try and just slam it into the ground. Holy moly. Okay, let's see. You jump up, and as you come down on it, the whip lash missing both the wasp and Mando is confused, both of them, and they are unexpecting as you come down and just freaking... Oh, uh, well, this dude right, right, in the, right in the nog. Right on him, dude. As you come down on this wasp, you crush it into the dirt. But it its wings now? begin to flap, and it begins to push back at you. It is not down. Help! <laughs> hey, uh, it is your turn, Mando. All right. Mando, kill it. I'm sick. I can't use my full strength. So 12 damage, sucker. It was very much injured, but that last hit was enough. <gasps> Only one wasp remaining, and it is Harvey's turn. Um. <clears throat> Harvey, seeing that you guys are managing to kill these wasps, decides to give you some encouragement in doing so. And uh, he doesn't yell very loud, but he does say, not in a quiet tone, to squash them quickly before they uh, before they escape. Uh, and they also, he also yells out not to let them sting him. He basically is just being very frantic. Uh, so I say we really are attracting far too much attention. 
Um, and so I'm going to move south um, past everyone, past them. And then when I reach the end of my movement, then I'll turn around and I will once more try to burn the wasp. Oh, he needs to make a saving throw, doesn't he? Yeah, dexterity. Of what? 13. Okay, he fails. Seven damage. As the little wasp is recovering from Garen's slash on it, the sacred flame is enough to completely wipe him out. Uh, That last wasp was releasing vibrations, but the the flame completely destroyed him. He is quiet. He is dead. Do you think these guys are edible? You guys can immediately hear (laughs) movement from the other side of the wall, and uh, you can hear what sounds like laughter. Uh, I'm going to run uh, south as fast as I can. Yeah, we should book it out of this area. I'm going to follow everybody else. Yeah, me too. Um, Okay, so this is where you guys are in relation to the water. Would you like to go further? I think that's fine. I'm going to stay there. Yeah, I think... I'm just going to hide here, yeah. Here's about chill. Okay, um, as you guys are walking into the woods, you guys can hear movement right out where you guys just were. <clears throat> you guys hear footsteps approaching, just n- not necessarily directly towards you, but they're entering the woods and going in deeper. I okay. say we should all hide up and prepare for a shootout. Yeah, I'm just going to try and hide. Okay, um, if you guys all want to hide, go ahead and make a group stealth check. You guys hear rustling, but uh, it eventually dies out, and you can hear the footsteps returning back to the gate. I let out a big sigh of relief. I let out a big old scream of relief. <laughs> I let out a big moan of relief. <laughs> um, Harvey has now oh. become very quiet now that he realizes the danger noise can happen. This yeah, we say, yeah. Harvey, can you shut up next time? I think so. He also says that he thought you guys were more accustomed to this type of lifestyle. He didn't think we'd be attacked by wasps. Okay, so you guys are sleeping. Uh, Garen, you are still awake. Um, as the night gets darker, it actually begins to lighten up a bit as, uh, the moon is incredibly full tonight. And, uh, Where now was? you, you actually have some vision on the forest around you. Uh, Garen, as you are sitting, watch, all of your friends are asleep, but you feel <laughs> like a really strong breeze. And then you feel another, like, really strong breeze. It's the and, quickly. uh. As you feel these breezes, you look up and see uh, flying over you uh, looks like a large dragon. You see it leave, but then it comes back. And it leaves, and it comes back. You soon realize that it is currently circling the forest. That's probably what destroyed the fort. Probably not the gnolls. Oh, gosh. I just keep watching it. I stay very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Um, the dragon's circling in such a way that he's going above you, but then he's going like over the fort, over the Dawnwood, around, and then back. He continues to do this for about an hour. You hear a very loud screeching sound, loud enough that everybody in the camp wakes up. It was pierces the air, and right as that happens, you can see the dragon uh, flying right over the Dawnwood. The rock comes out of nowhere and completely grabs the dragon and begins to fight with him in mid-air over the Dawnwood. Guys, if we can snipe this, you know how much XP we can get? (laughs) (laughs) How far can you shoot, Ian? Far enough. This dragon is huge. It's very rare to see a dragon this big. And the rock, the rock is equal in his size. Okay. Um, But the rock is much faster and clearly much more deadly because as the fight goes on, you eventually see the rock completely kill the dragon by ripping out its throat and the dragon's body falls and drops Dang. into the Dunwood just beyond the fortress. Ooh, I need to find that. Yeah, I, I need also to find it quick. <laughs> want to steal stuff so I can make stuff out of it. Because it is dark, it's hard to guess like the exact amount, but you you can see that it fell pretty deep into the Dunwood. It might be at least like half a day's trip through the forest. If you go the right way, it could take about a day. Um, after the rock kills the dragon, you see that it flies straight back to its mountain, which you guys are pretty close to. Well, Zinu's seen more in this day than he's ever wanted to in his life. <laughs> Zinu, you okay, bro? You doing all right? Uh, I want to go back to my family right about now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good team going in there. It is morning. Um, it's up to you guys what you want to do now. 
I wanna, uh, one of us needs to sneak up and look through the wall and see if those things are sleeping yet. Yeah, we could probably at least peek behind. Take a little dip in the water, you know? Okay. <laughs> um, you guys are peeking it through the wall at the back end this time? I'll go peek again. It's cool. Yeah, go peek, she's bro. <laughs> As you're walking through the water, you see that it's it's not super steep, but it's like a little steep. It's really muddy. As you walk down, you slip in the mud, falling, sliding into the water, loud splash, and right as you do so, um... It's a beautiful no woman bathing. (laughs) Right as you get up out of the water, you can see over the wall, but you see that, um, there are at least six gnolls looking right in your direction. 